Hello, today is November 11th, 2020. My name is Mia Thagler. I'm interviewing Kristen Sayas for the University Library Special Collections and Archives at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, hereafter abbreviated as ETRGV. This project is in partnership with the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Ms. Sayas, that this interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV and shared with the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The University Library Special Collections and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation you are willing to share. UTRGB University Library will retain copyright or non-exclusive right to the interview and any other materials you donate to Special Collections and Archives at UTRGB. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record you consenting to make sure you agree with our interview procedures before we begin. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say yes or agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. So question one, do you give University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley University Library? Yes, I agree. Question two, do you grant UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives right, title, and interest in copyright over the interview and any materials you provide? Yes, I agree. Three, do you agree to allow UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes, I agree. Do you grant the University Library Special Collections and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voces of a Pandemic Oral History mini project, which will include posting this video on the internet? Yes, I agree. As you recall, we previously filled out a pre-interview form. We use information from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure VOSA server at the University of Texas at Austin. Before VOSA sends it to UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives, we would have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members so that it will not be part of your public file. Your public file will only be accessible at UTRGV University Library. These final two questions ask for your consent on what I just described. So question five, do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives? Yes, I agree. And the final question, on occasion, UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and Voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone numbers or your email with the journalists? No, I do not agree. Okay, um, thank you for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives. I look forward to what you say in the interview questions. I will ask after this intro statement. Kristen, thank you for your time. Your stories and, and experiences are valuable to us at UTRGV Special Collections. We are committed to preserving the stories of Mexican Americans and Latinos from South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley, and those who work closely with these populations during this COVID-19 pandemic. Because you are a high school senior at Rainville Early College High School, as well as a babysitter for the community in Rainville, Texas, I believe you have meaningful stories and experiences to share on how COVID-19 has impacted these roles you carry, as well as those around you. So before I ask you to share your stories, tell us who is Kristen Sayas. My name is Kristen Sayas. I am a senior at Rainville Early College High School, and I am an FFA. I'm in Cotillion Pals, and I like to help out in my community. I babysit to get extra money. And yeah. Moving on, I want to first get your view about COVID-19 with these next questions. 
So the first question I want to ask you is, when did you hear about COVID-19 and how did you learn about it? For example, like on the TV, the radio, from teachers, social media, or et cetera. I first heard about COVID when it was like barely coming around. And I heard about it through social media, students at school, and teachers. More of the teachers were telling us we need to be more cautious about COVID because none of us really knew the seriousness of how dangerous it may have been. The second question, what was your first reaction to the information that you received about COVID-19? At first, I was scared because I didn't know how serious it could have gotten with anyone. And it was like a silent, deadly disease going around that if you had a weak immune system, it could have gotten you. Or even if you have a strong immune system, it still will get you. But we really never knew how serious it could have gotten until we started seeing it here in the Valley. At what point did you realize that this pandemic was a serious life altering event or do you not think it's serious and why? I believe it is a very serious pandemic that is going on because like I said, we didn't know how serious it was before it got here in the Valley. At first it was all talk, like we didn't know anything. And once it got here, that's when it started to get everyone like instantly and we never knew like who had it because it is a silent and no one knows like the symptoms yet. Over the last few months, what news media, social media, or other sources do you rely on to keep you informed about coronavirus? To stay informed about coronavirus, I like to watch our local news because they deal with down here in the valley and so they will tell you the hot spots and everything. So for instance, like if I look at the national news, they don't talk about down here in the valley. So you don't know how serious it is down here. But when on local news, that's all they talk about. So you know the seriousness here. Can you share with me what you understand about COVID-19 as an infectious disease? I understand COVID is a very serious topic because you're never safe, even wearing a mask. It's a constant reminder that like, you need to keep yourself and your family safe first. And you could put your life at risk going anywhere or being with anyone. So I believe it's like a very serious topic when you don't understand the health guidelines and you don't protect yourself. Would you take the first COVID-19 vaccine available on the mar market? Why or why not? Personally, I would not be taking the first vaccines that come around due to them barely coming around and you don't know the side effects or how they may affect you. I would take it if I see other people taking it and it is helping them and it is protecting them. But if it's the first one that ever came out, I would not be taking it because I would not want to put myself at risk of getting more sick than what could have possibly happened if I did get COVID. Does your family hold the same beliefs as you do about COVID-19 or are there some members who take it more seriously or more lightly? In my family, everyone takes COVID seriously due to my grandpa having diabetes. So his immune system isn't as strong as others. And my whole family works in the medical field. So they always have to keep them, their selves protected. And even coming home, they keep us protected. With any instance, they are the most serious people that you could talk to about COVID and they will help you understand COVID even more. 
For these next questions, I'd like to talk about how you see COVID-19 affect your family members, friends, and those equally important. Because you are from Rainbow, Texas, where there have recently been an increase in COVID-19 cases. So the next question, do you have any family members who are essential workers? If so, tell us their precautions that they have taken in order to keep their loved ones safe from the virus. Most of my family members are essential workers. My mother is a dental assistant and she always makes sure to leave her shoes outside before entering our house. She showers right after and washes her scrubs just in case she did come in contact with a patient who has like no symptoms of COVID, but they still had it in their system. She's always washing her hands and using hand sanitizer whenever she needs to. My, gra my grandma, who also is a pharmacist, and she comes in contact with many sick patients that need the medications throughout this time. And also my two aunts, one is an RN and another is a phlebotomist who does do the rapid COVID test. They all have the regular COVID test as precautions just because they may have come in contact, but not knowing like who has the virus. So by like a month, they all take a COVID test. What have you learned? What have you learned from them about the seriousness and effects of COVID-19? I have learned that there are so many people who have it, but do not show any symptoms. And it's a big risk to go out because you never know what might happen. I also know that even though it, it affects the elderly, young people, and it can get bad to do like, you don't know what really could happen. And it's really important to take the precautions like wearing your mask and staying home if you do not need to go out unless it's necessary. Has anyone in your family contracted COVID-19 and or has died from the virus? If so, describe how that experience was and how you felt about it. Thankfully, nobody in my immediate family has gotten the virus, thanks to the precautions that they have been taking. But I do have a close family member who I consider one of my uncles. He is a state trooper and has to go work during this time of the riots up in Austin. He was there on several occasions, and one time he came home and found out he had the virus. His wife is a nurse, and she knows the, the precautions and found out that he did have the virus. So she tried to keep her kids away from them, but one of their children did get it. So the whole family ended up going into quarantine for two weeks and they did not have it anymore. His wife could not go to work and neither did he, which was really hard, especially in the times like these. Is there anything in part particular that you struggle to do at home now that COVID-19 has made it harder to go out? It's so much harder to see my friends since like we cannot go out as easy, easily that we used to like, we used to get up and go. So we, because we don't know who in their family might have like gotten sick or they have a weak immune system. So we don't want to worry about trying to like, we don't want to put their own families at risk either. So that's really hard. And I also don't want to put my own family at risk. Like if I went out and I brought it, I would feel like so bad because I could have lost someone's life right there. How has this pandemic changed the way your family, your family celebrates birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, or holidays. And can you give several examples or any memorable stories you might have? It has changed a lot in a lot of ways. Our family is a very big family of 30 or some, sometimes more depending on like who we invite. And it's harder to go out to celebrate birthdays with everyone, but we cannot because we're just trying to stay as safe as we can. And now that we have just small get togethers with only the people we see on a daily, like those in our household. It's hard because we were so used to having such big gatherings at restaurants and at our relative's house. I also have a friend who graduated last semester and it's really different 
with the previous graduations because they had to wear masks and stay six feet apart and they couldn't take pictures with their friends afterwards like we would normally would. They also couldn't hug each other or throw the caps in, in the air. So it was a really different experience to see at the graduation. How has your brother, who is 13 years old, reacted to COVID-19, and does he think it's serious? Why or why not? He knows he needs to stay at home and wear his mask. If we were needed to go anywhere, which is a rare occasion because he needs to attend church on Sundays, he doesn't get out as much as, as usual, like he usually would. So I don't think he really knows how serious COVID can get. I think sometimes he understands how serious it is, especially to our family having many essential workers. And so they're constantly telling us how serious it is. The next set of questions will be about your school experience and how it has been affected by COVID. So how has the transition from in-person learning to online learning been for you? Personally, I have enjoyed online learning because I am able to get my work done faster than I would have if I was at school. I'm able to finish early to have time to do other things that I need to get done. It helps me because I have a busy schedule, so it's just more convenient to me and I'm able to continue with my daily schedules without holding myself back because I have classes like during times. What have been your struggles and or your successes with online learning? My biggest struggle is trying to get in contact with my teachers. They usually want to do Zoom meetings, but sometimes they're unable to answer my questions. And normally I would just go to their classrooms and ask questions. And now I cannot do that. I also have to do my college applications on my own because the teachers aren't here to help most of the time. It's better to have face-to-face -face contact because it's hard to communicate through a screen. It's hard to keep up with knowing my grades and whether I'm filling out applications right. So that has been one of the biggest struggles so far. How long has it been since you have been to an in-person class and what are the differences you have seen with online learning compared to in-person learning? I have not been to in-person class since last year before the school closed in March. I've been, it's been different because in class you're able to raise your hand and ask for help, but now it's harder to interpret, interpret the teacher during a class meeting because they cannot fully understand help that we need. Going back to the topic of your brother, what struggles did he face with online learning? Or has he not faced any struggles? My brother has faced the biggest struggle because he does have ADD. So his attention is not always there. So whenever he loses focus like easily. So like trying to keep him focused to do all his work on time is the biggest struggle because we don't know what he's thinking mentally. So we have to help him and like sometimes we feel like we're pushing too much on him where he gets stressed out and then we get stressed out. So the online learning isn't for him, I could say. Like, of course he does his work, but it's a struggle of trying to get him to do his work and understand his work because he is a person who likes to talk and like he'll talk to the teachers and be like, what is this? And he likes to ask questions. So the online thing, it's not working for him because he's just, he's not comfortable talking with the screen as he would be talking face to face. Going back to you, how do you feel about COVID-19's impact on your senior year as far as all the senior traditions go like football games, senior sunrise, or other things that you have at your school? For me, it's really sad. Our games have been limited due to COVID and we haven't had any pep rallies, which were a big thing for our school. 
We were unable to have a small parade as well as and understand that it's necessary to limit our school functions, but it does hurt us sometimes because in our last year of high school, it was supposed to be the most memorable. We have not been able to get together as a class. I feel like our class is really close and it's hard to not do some of the senior like activities. And for other senior classes last year, they were able to have their half of their senior year like they got to do those little memorable things and we have not been able to do anything for our senior year. So I understand like COVID is a big thing, but it did take away a lot from us as our junior year and senior year. What are your plans on attending college now that COVID has made it harder to attend school? Hopefully when I go to college, it'll be more in an in-person instead of online. In-person classes would be better for me because it's college and they're trying to get you an actual degree. Unlike with just high school, it's like I could attend the classes in person, but would it's a low risk for me with COVID. If the offer still stands, why or why would you not attend in-person classes next semester in high school? I would stay online student because it's easier to control with my own schedule. It would be easier for me to get a job because I'm able to finish my schoolwork earlier instead of wasting my days in school doing nothing when I could be working help to pay for my own college. I feel like I'm also safer here at home just in case there is an outbreak at school. It wouldn't have, I wouldn't have to worry about getting my family sick because I live with my grandparents and they are at high risk as well as my mother and brother. I know you're in clubs like FFA and Lower Valley Cotillion Club. So what has changed for you in those clubs because of COVID and all the precautions that are, have been insisted by the state? For FFA, a lot has changed because not only do we have to care for the animals and make sure they are staying healthy, but we also have to do that now for ourselves because of COVID. We have to sanitize and deep clean everything once a week. Sometimes someone goes to spray down everything with a disinfectant and we have to make sure it's really clean for us to take care of our animals. Our big problem this year was if there was even gonna be a show season at the end of the year because we didn't know the like uncertainty about this and we didn't wanna waste our money on like, if there was no show, we spent a thousand dollars for no reason. So we would wanna get our own profit. This weekend, we did have a competition, or this weekend, we do have a competition online for FFA, which is totally different because we're not used to having an online thing. It was more like an in-person, you go and take a test type of deal. So we have to work out like who's there to watch us. And it's a whole different setting for all of us. So we aren't sure like how that's really gonna work tomorrow. And with Cotillion, our luncheons, we've had to start wearing our masks and staying six, six feet apart. We've had to be really cautious and now it's outdoors instead of indoors to make sure nobody gets sick with COVID. The big ball we had would have limited seatings and not as many people to go and watch and support. How has your school reacted since first learning about the virus last semester in March? Are there any particular differences from last semester to this semester that you have seen? They have tried to take the best precautions as possible. We've had to switch to online and it was, it was new to all of us in the school district. So we're trying to learn together and how to work online and doing the online learning it's easier to do it this semester than last semester because with COVID, when COVID first came, we didn't know exactly what we were doing or how we were gonna do everything personally because it was new to all of us. 
So this year, it's easier because we already got a little taste of it last year. So now we're all like, we're still trying to figure it out, but we're working together to make it the best experience possible for everyone. Why or why might you not agree with how the school has reacted towards COVID-19? I agree on their safety measures they have taken. If you need to take something or pick something up from the school, they have someone to do it for you that works there. There are limited people who are allowed to go inside the school. They watch who might have been in contact with other people with COVID. So they are very aware of the things that go inside their school and as well as outside. Are there any main tactics that stood out to you that either you liked or disliked about how the school is trying to reduce COVID-19 cases within the school? Personally, I like the way how they, I like the way they handled the small little outbreak at the beginning of the year because they shut down the school in order to limit like more cases to arise and it, they knew how to handle it afterwards. But I also did not like the, the fact that once in-person classes were, were available, they made it to where the students can switch class instead of keeping them in separate classrooms to limit contact. This has just made it easier for the students to get sick if any of them had been in contact with the COVID patient. How have the staff members and the teachers been reacting to the COVID-19 situation? Are they, are they reaching out to help the students or anything else in particular to help them? They've reacted in a good way. They are trying to do their best in, in this circumstances, they have been trying to help us with in person, even though they might, it might be hard for them sometimes, they're still trying to, which I think is a good thing. They're actually caring for their students and being understanding towards us if we have questions or like any help or advice with college applications. Moving on to some work related questions. Um, how do you keep up with your school schedule while babysitting? Is there a schedule that you'd like to keep? Personally, I like to get my school work done in the morning so I'm able to do everything else later in the day. Whenever I babysit, I like to do my school work when the child is either playing or napping so I can be a- <laughs> That's okay, you can answer whenever you're ready. With my busy schedule, so I either focus on the child, I also usually let the parents know that my school schedule, so they know like how to help me ahead of time before I throw myself back. As mentioned earlier, Ramavo has had an increase in COVID-19 cases what have been your concerns with having to babysit while in a pandemic? My biggest concern is that I know the family does not take the precautions. I know that my family and myself are at risk for getting COVID. You never know what they are doing or like who they may come in contact. It's a big risk for me to bring the child to my house and let them play with everything and touch everything. And so I have constant, I have to be constantly cleaning just to be safe and keep everyone in my own household safe. Do you feel babysitting is necessary even though we are struggling in a pandemic? Why or why not? I feel babysitting is necessary because the families I babysit for have essential, they are essential workers as the primary caregiver. One family has a teacher and nurse for parents. And so I know it's hard for them to take care of the children during the day. It's also not easy trying to take care of others while trying to take care of their own children. And so I understand that sometimes they do need to have extra help. It's good for 
it's good to help those who need it because without their jobs, they wouldn't have an income to support their family. Has there been any instances where you have had to quarantine because of your job? If so, explain what precautions you took in order to avoid getting your family sick. There was one time when I had to quarantine because once COVID first came to Raymondville, I was in PALS, which I had to volunteer with elementary children. There was, which there was a case of some children getting sick at the school that I had volunteered at. My little cousin had gone to the same school function and so I had to watch them and I had to make sure that I didn't get COVID and give it to the kids I babysat as well as my own family. So during that time, my teacher kept in contact with all of us to make sure all of us were still okay and none of us had gotten sick because that week we had spent all week there at the elementary volunteering with the kids. And that's where the first ever like COVID startups with an elementary school. Is there any part about babysitting that makes you question COVID-19, such as the risk of getting the virus and giving it to the other children or them giving it to you? It's all a risk because you never know anyone else's health like situations. You might be sick with no symptoms, so you have to be careful not to get the children, the children sick, and you also need to be aware of the family's like habits. You never know who they might have been around or where they go, so you never let your guard down when it comes to other people. If you were to ever give COVID-19 to a child you babysat, what precautions would you have taken? I would first contact the parents because I know I was responsible and I need to tell them myself. I would quarantine to make sure I didn't give it to anyone else. I would also try to keep in contact with the family to make sure they are doing okay and make sure nobody else has gotten the virus. Besides babysitting other children, do you have anyone else that you usually care for in your family household? If so, um, who and what do you do? I take care of my younger brother. I watch him and make sure he's keeping up with his schoolwork because he usually doesn't do it unless we like push him to do it. I also have to cook for him because we don't necessar necessarily trust him with the stove yet. And I have to do, I have to do his laundry and like take care of him also while taking care of myself, which is hard and taking care of the kid that I am babysitting because that's all like, if you put, if you let one down, then you never know what may be happening. Have you ever considered increasing your charges for your babysitting services during the pandemic? Why or why not? I do not want to increase the charges because the parents know that I'm at risk, so they usually pay me extra, so I don't ask for m more. And I also know that they are themselves put themselves at risk, and they shouldn't have to worry about paying me so much because they, the virus already makes them anxious enough. So these are the last final questions, sorry. Um, are you satisfied with how Willis County's response to COVID was? Personally, I feel like they could have done better than like what they already did. They've done the best to their knowledge through, though because we've never had an outbreak this big before. So they're learning day by day on what might be happening or how to help slow down the spread of the virus. They're tired. They tried to issue a curfew to help as well as stores and restaurants having a low capacity and make sure the people wear their masks.
if you know. Oh my God, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Um, if you. <laughs> If you know how the state. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. If you know how the state response did to COVID-19, what is your opinion about how it is being handled right now? I feel that the state has not done a very good job with keeping everyone's health first. They're not helping to make sure everyone follows the correct rules and everyone just does whatever they want. And they're essentially hurting others as well as themselves. Are you satisfied with the way the president has responded to COVID-19 along with his administration? Um, we're talking about Donald Trump, not Joe Biden. I do not like the way the president Trump has handled the situation due to him having the upper hand and not setting the example of wearing a mask. So when he doesn't wear a mask, it just shows that everyone else that they don't have to wear masks because our own president doesn't even wear his own. And so he has a big influence on, on the people and what they do and they follow his footsteps and go, they may be going in the wrong direction, but they never know because they feel like if he's not, if he's doing it, then everyone else could do it. And it's just hurting our country even more because you're putting, others at risk and we're losing our own population due to others not caring about everyone else's health or safety. If you had the power to respond to COVID-19, um, what would you do differently or what would you not do? I would enforce the mask rule and make sure everyone wears it and if not, get fined because they're risking everyone's health. You don't know everyone's health issues and it's just an extra precaution rather than not doing anything at all. If you could vote, who would it be and why would you choose them based off of what you know about COVID-19 and how everyone has been reacting to it so far? Personally, I would vote for Joe Biden because he has already stated that his plan to limit COVID cases. He has already started the talk of trying to protect the people's health, and he is also mod modeling wearing the mask, unlike Donald Trump. Biden takes it more seriously and understands the death rates that have been increasing all over the country. Okay, for the last and final question, are there any additional experiences during this pandemic that we have not talked about that you would like to share? I feel like we've suffered from so much already besides COVID, such as the riots. The riots were a big wake up call to the government and those around us that we really are a divided country. And I really hope that the, everything could change in the future so we are more of a united country. um that's it for all the questions um is that all that you would like to share yes okay thank you for your time and have a good day <laughs>